game three. Mate, it, it, it's an absolute banger, isn't it? Like the fact that we get to see a third game, Nika Baby Anti Mage, and also like the webcams during that draft. They had so much like camaraderie and, and energy, and it honestly is coming from the non affiliated alliance booktop and in the stand in. Like they're really bringing some like infectious energy to the team, and that is. Yeah, it's, it's really paying off, and yeah, they mentioned it already, but this is an anti- Wait, hold on, wait a second. What we got? They said that this anti-mage would yep. be not bronze tier. I repeat, he is bronze tier. <gasps> but I will say, to his defense, I just don't <laughs> think he has Dota Plus. Yeah, I don't think he- yeah, he's only just picked it up. You know? Yeah, he's only just recently. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He got that level five in a day. Uh, yeah, he that, bought like it in a day. minute. He yeah. just one mana void, bang, voids there. By the end of this game, he'll have master tier. You know. Well, we'll see how the game goes, I suppose. But you know, all jokes aside, it's a pretty good anti mage game. Y yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a stellar anti mage game. Just because you, there's no real clean lockdown. The the bane never really enjoys playing into anti mage because of that that spell shield. You can't always grip him. But if you do catch him, then sure, he can be food. But liquid, they will have a nice window to try and run through the lineup of alliance, but. It's such a difficult window because it, it's pretty much on Luna getting BKB to offset the the Mars and Batrider. If if Luna doesn't get a quicker BKB to take those fights, then I honestly see the defensive mechanisms of their draft on Alliance just really shining and allowing this anti mage to hit all his timings he needs. Oh, yeah, nice little left and right. A little bit of a dodge there from Stamana. Not going to get caught out by the remnant. But yeah, Liquid is being a little bit left field with some of their picks recently, like. Throughout their dominance of the group stage, they picked a lot more, you know, sturdier off lanes. But now we're seeing a little bit of quirkiness coming from from Liquid. And again, what is a somewhat important series to them because they want to try and contend for that for that first place spot. They need the win for this. And we're going to see a Zai Ludwig with a, a voice bit. It doesn't feel like the strongest lane. Maybe with level advantage, Akon short into Bushwhack into an a a Remnant, you probably could do some damage, but it doesn't feel. Like it's going to dominate an anti-mage. Unless sure. maybe like you could do like the javelin play on the hoodwink. We go for the big damage, the magic damage burst, and then you get points in Akon shot. That could be an, a possible play. But again, that lane could either be super cool or just nothing to an anti-mage. What about this top lane? What do you expect to see out of this? Luna and Bane against the Mars snap. I think the... Uh, the Luna will always have a good time because Bane naturally soaks up a lot of this damage. You're going to see Insania potentially even die in this top lane, but it'll be for the good of the Luna, right? You you want to soak up the little Shredder hits, you want to prevent the Mars ever getting on top of Luna, and just, just keep the farm going. Again, like I mentioned, this game for Liquid is about laning efficiency. Trying to get the most you can from the lanes, just throw that into a mid-game timing. Watch the man and might be dead here. Uh, if they're able to turn and click him down, they can. First First blood here for Liquid down bottom. Uh, try and get aggressive there, Alliance, but not quite having enough power in it to take down Zai. So, yeah. Early on, uh, limit to how offensive the anti mage can really be. Ooh, wait a second. Is anti mage dying as well? Oh, oh he's gone as well. Oh, that's uh, well, that hurts. And this is that like hurts the, for Alliance that. But this is like the the fun of this bot lane because it could easily swing either way, right? Like if Weaver suddenly kills off the hoodwink and anti mage gets the kill, suddenly you have an orb of corrosion. The lane's kind of hard to play, but because they get the kill on the Weaver, then they quickly punish Nika, baby. This lane could easily shift very slowly to just wave spam from Liquid. So yeah, this bot lane is really exciting because now Stominant, again, no Sakuchi, baiting Boxy this time. Like, this is a very volatile lane. Like I expect to see so many kills from this. I'm mid. There's somebody going down here. That's close between the two of them, but Supreme has got the bottle good to go. Both heroes being pushed to the limits there. Yeah, the, uh, the Batstorm matchup is always fun to watch because Storm with the Vortex, with points in Static Remnant, even the Overload, like he, he can always bully the Batrider to low HP. So if Batrider ever wants to go aggressive, he needs to make sure you know he has the sticky napalm stacks. He's ready for the engagement because Storm always has that turnaround potential. And yeah, these lanes, very back and forth. I don't think there's ever, I don't think there's one lane right now which that has a clear winner and it really kind of kind of puts emphasis on the individual skill coming from the players, trying to get a little bit more than they can. Again, pretty even thus far. Oh, do you expect to see any sort of moves to the mid before we get the six on Storm? 
Anyone from Alliance that can come over and help get the kill? I think. Ooh, wait. Ooh. Oh, there's now. Rather low. So the thing with uh, anti mage and why it's a harder hero, you naturally have to babysit him for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And with a hero like Weaver, potentially if you've blocked the camps, anti mage is under tower, you can leave. But I feel like the you ha the, there's a, there's an underlying amount of damage that Hoodwink and Voice Rip give. So I expect Weaver to basically AFK the lane and maybe Snapfire can leave. That's the one lane. Again, if the lane's in front of tower, Mars very unkillable because you can just spear someone away if you're near your tower. So to your question, the only hero that can realistically rotate is going to be that Snapfire moving on in and going for that kill on mid lane. But again, it's, uh, it's not so easy because Alliance, they, they drafted in such a way that they're locking themselves into side lanes to try and take the fight. So yeah. This will be a pretty slow game in regards to map rotations unless one lane goes so well that they un unlock themselves to play the game. And it is interesting to see that the Nico Baby, even after the one death, he still commits to the Orb of Corrosion. He, un he understands the value of kill potential and that if Liquid ever overstep them up, they can get the kill. Not top lane. Like, yeah, All right. Another attempt on to Matumba Man. And this time it's successful. <laughs> A lot of damage, of course, physical between these two of them here. Yeah, this, oh, if this is a good anti like again, this is a good anti mage game, but if yeah. they have a good laning phase and he gets to like a battle fury into one item, he's gonna have an age like minute 16 potentially because li uh, Lil Shredder from Snapfire, the bugs from Weaver, that Roshan's gonna they're, be super quick. They're low down here. Is he dead? They took quite the hit from uh, for the Hellbear. He's the Hellbear came out, gave the two of them a bit of a smash. They got demoted last season. I did, yeah. Strike him back here. Good lads. Keep it up. And Boxer, yeah, he's going to have to step out of lane. Nico Baby off the back of that, gets the space to head up, pick up that ring of health, and now he's going to be pretty much palmly sitting at full HP in the lane. So he's going to be feeling a very safe down here now. And you see, oh, we get the replay. We'll see it again, the little smash that comes all the way over from the large camp, and, you know, extra bit of damage, bringing them down low enough oh, uh, for that. the opportunity for Stamanon to get in and finish off Zai. Push back Boxy. That's That's him. Six, yeah. And Mickey. Going to try and go for Supreme. Some good juking across the tree line, though. And a cookie in. Mickey, he's not able to finish off the kill on Supreme. He's got to, he's got to step back. Boxy is well out of mana. And Mickey still maybe considering what he can do with the mana that he has left. But the stacks are up. The napalm is in. Uh, along with the break. It's not quite enough to kill him off, though. So Mickey will live. Boxy, he goes down. There's a lights that keeps Supreme safe in that mid lane against that first attempt from Mickey once he hits the six. Yeah, much like, do you remember game one, the Murano, every move was super fluid from Boxy? Not so much in this game, right? Like he aggroes the camp, kills off bot lane. He runs to mid to try and take a fight. He dies mid, his courier dies. So this is the complete opposite from what we saw in Boxy game one. And how is he going to recover? Like there isn't this traditional way to play this game because you have slightly quirkier heroes. It's not like you can go, oh, let's go to my you know, tanky centaur lane and run down the lane, right? This Modern. is a hoodwink. He just can't be here anymore. Man, he's got to run. And Storm they kill Mickey. Well. That same time they made the move down bottom, they were making the move mid. Mickey taken down. Alliance continues to play very nicely around the bat. See top, Leslau. It's getting gone upon a bit by the two of them, but Aramis has come back over. And Sania is surely dead. I mean, can Matu finish off the kill on the two of them? Backups in from Staman and Matu, even if he gets the kill, he may co it may cost him his life here. As Leslau and Staman are running Matu down, Spear not quite able to get the angle. So Matu is under the tower, he will live. And Mickey, he's in with the TP looking for the cleanup. Get, able to catch on to Leslau. Unfortunately there for Leslau on his Mars. Couldn't quite get the connection on that spear. It really nearly did it, but again, like I think the saving grace here, if if Insane didn't have a TP up and Mickey made that rotation, the big zip into that, it'd have really reduced his jungling and the ability to cover back up. But oh. Aramis, very active on the map. Yeah, getting involved with some action here down bottom with Nico, baby. Boxy, he'll pop. Mana Void comes out, Boxy's life ends. Oh, classic anti mage game. I die for you to farm. And uh, Nico, baby, thank you, lads. I'll be getting my battle for you very soon. I'd say very soon. It's quite well ways away, but. He's being a right nuisance, you know, keeping his eye out of mana, so he can't make a move down here, and it's not like he can head anywhere else on the map to, to be impactful while his mana is completely drained. Yeah, like the only way Zai can play this lane is by connecting bushwhacks and hitting acorn shots and just being annoying. He has no mana. And unfortunately, he did try to go for the bushwhack, but, you know, Nika baby, very 
quick on the blink. I believe that cost him a couple of mangoes. Boxy came in and fed him a couple too. fed him. He was like, use your yeah. spells. And ah. Yeah, unfortunately, he's a bit too full on the food. So, oh well. A bit rough. Yeah, this is... They, I mean, they can't do anything against no. this anti mage now in lane. Yeah, nothing. And, but, but who is going to be the hero to shake sort of Nico Baby off his game after, the, you know, this anti mage has had a pretty solid start? Well, surprisingly, it is going to be the Storm Spirit. I think if Nico Baby ever gets a little bit too close to a tower, that yeah. Storm zipping in, of course, you have to be careful with the Mana Void. But if you do get like a Bushwhack into a Vortex and a uh, Sharpshooter from the Hoodwink, you are going to be able to kill him off. So I think Nico Baby, great aggression so far, but needs to respect that you know, that quick jump from a, from the mid lane. As you see here, now there's no mana void. Maybe that could be an indicator to make the move. But Alliance, they have such great vision. Like, look at, if you look at the meme map, there's that cheeky little Radiant Ward. Even if Storm wanted to make that slow rotation to bot, he'd be seen. So yeah, and Alliance just making all the right moves to enable Nika Baby right now. 4k network, oh, more are. than the Luna. Still overall very even, of course. Mid lane, Supreme, trying to make a move. He's got Stamana by his side, sends out the bugs, and Liquid don't want to dive any further for the back kill. Supreme's able to walk away. Boxy, back to the lane here with Zai. Eyes on Nico, baby, but still so hard to get him. They're going to try. What the hit of the ult? It's good burst. Is it enough? It is not. Uh, it is, sorry, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> I was sort of wondering if he's going to be able to blink out, if that was going to be enough, but that wasn't. He couldn't get it off in time. They take him down. Yeah, and that that is when That's the spells a... connect. They have the damage. Like they did with the break here, I guess, yeah. But they just did such a good job at not having any mana. Oh. Yeah, what we have going on up top at the same time. Looks like a bit of a bit of the old arena combo onto Insania. Not a chance for him. They'll be able to work on the tower now. TP's coming in. It's going to be Boxy turning up to the top lane. He's hit the six now. Off the back of that kill down bottom they got on the anti-mage. So he can look for further setup with the step. Uh, if they get any, anyone else over here, Matsu at the moment sticking to the jungle. The smoke's up from Mikke and Insania. I'm going to try and get a bit of a bit of a pick off on this top lane. Leslau hanging around, and they'll be able to find the setup here. Mikke in straight away. Cookie to try and get him to safety, but there's no bringing him out of the reach of these four heroes of Liquid. But Zai, oh poor Zai, now looking very dead here. Supreme, even being able to bottle up that haste rune, didn't even need it to chase him down there, but I have it ready for the next one. Some friendly teammate tips coming out between the two of them. Nico Baby's gonna be very happy with the continued space that he's got. Sure, he did get taken down that once, but he's back to lane and he's still on track uh, for what should be a very good Battle Fury timing for the second time this series. Had a great time on his PA's Battle Fury and this time around on the AM timing. It, it's as honestly, it looks to be around the similar 12, 13 minutes. It's gonna be quick. Man, he's like 600 gold away from it. Like. He's got only a Corrosion, a Stick, and a Quell. Like, that's all he's got in his inventory, going straight for the Battle Fury, and it is just offers such a great laning phase. Stamana doing a really good job as a stand-in. Again, this is a last-minute stand-in. Yeah. And really kind of helping bring quite a lot to the team thus far. Ah, he is. And this is the good old Weaver we love to see. You just park yourself in the enemy triangle, you play around Sakuchi, suddenly you're using two, three sentries to control the area, and if they jump you, you time-lapse away. So, just really stunting the fluid motions that you want as a carry. Because after laning phase, you kind of, you have your, you, you've memorized the rotations through the jungle, push lane, hit the neutral camp, quickly go back to lane, back to ancient camp. And right now, this little old weaver, position five, is making Matu pause, you know, for five, six seconds. And even a momentary pause in a Dota game can really offset the farming kind of uh, abilities. So yeah, I just love, look, he's still in there. Look at him. Leeching XP, preventing stacks. Just being really annoying. He might die though, but honestly, it's quite value if he does. I mean, Insania would happily drop a grip on him. He's going to probably drop a sentry too. And like, if at 12 minutes in the game, you're banging down a sentry this defensively, right? Like, it's not even unblocking the ancients, right? It's literally the anti weaver sentry. There's not a lot of them in the game, so that's why this hero is pretty good. Does he have to Battle Fury? He Ooh, does. It's shipping so out. 12 minutes in. Battle Fury done for Nico, baby. Is it? Is it the, uh, how quick is it? That's a 12, 12 20. Pretty darn good. There we go. Right, there we go. Faster oh. than the fastest on the old anti mage. In five matches. But I was going to say, I, I expected it to be the fastest. Like, yeah. The fact that he went like naked Battle Fury, he, he really went for it. Nice kill. And this is kind of Liquid's answer now. Like, they've, they've probably got a good indicator that Anti-Mage has Fury. 
So they need to start, you know, making some plays. Oh, Supreme. He's able to just walk up instead of with the last but not enough damage done. Mickey's still able to zip away. And as he walks away, we get to see a rare Radiant glimpse into Storm Spirit players. He's not going for the Kaya Sanj. Normally, you go for a much tankier build, but I guess going into the Anti-Mage and understanding the window of no Manta, if you do get a quick Orchid, you can become the Anti-Mage Hunter. Of course, Anti-Mage will ruin you late game, but if you have the nice Orchid timing, it might be a nice window. So again, Liquid, they, they haven't answered Anti-Mage yet, but in this moment of uh, farm, Orchid on Storm, grouping around Luna, this could be the window where they start closing down the map because it's still 5k gold until Antimage becomes somewhat unkillable. And this is the uh, yeah the moment for Liquid to try and exploit that a little bit. Oh, another setup from Zai. He's been getting quite a quite a few of these here. The bushwhack into the ultimate. We saw it all start when he came back into that bottom lane and set up for the action onto Nico Baby and now across the map. Each time it's up, they've got to watch out. Zai's been getting some good catches. This now puts so much pressure on Storm Spirit though, because they just use a grip to kill the Weaver. That now gives, what is, what's the cooldown on this bad boy? 122 minutes. Where Antimage is like, all right, chilling. Bane now can't kill me. It's gonna have to be Bane plus someone, right? Like, of course Bane would need help to kill him, but the grip itself is that lockdown for the Antimage. That's why I me mentioned the Storm. It's now on him to do it, and he finds it, he gets the kill. Good stuff, Mickey. There's that. He wants to go for this. Misses the spin. He is going to miss the opening. Matu will get the Eclipse off, but the damage will be done, taking out the Luna. Let's see what Liquid can find in response, though. Mickey's going to be able to turn up. They've already picked up the kill onto Leslau. Mickey still with a decent bit of mana. Should be able to chase for it. Oh, well, yes, he's going for the bigger target. He wants to go for Supreme. Gets him, finds him in the trees. The silence is in. He's going to try for a TP out, but they've got the damage. Zai hits the shot. What a, yeah, beautiful heads up play. Expecting the TP to go to the zip, and that's all because Liquid they have one top dire ward to see the anti mage. They then instantly find the kill there. Bounty. Alliance goes aggressive as we see the replay, right? So this is all as they kill off anti mage. Alliance in their heads like, guys, they have to be doing this objective top. They killed him there. Let's quickly try and find something kills. But they're in position to make the counterplay, and it all stems from the fact that Insania. Hit such a quick nightmare on the initiation. So even though Mars whiffs the spear, he's not able to start pumping out the extra little bit of damage because of how quick that nightmare was. And the rest of Liquid, their heroes, they're pretty mobile, right? Storm Spirit, Void Spirit. Cheeky little giggle from the Storm Spirit player. So they're able to move from objective to objective pretty quickly. Yeah, nice moves. Yeah, good target priority. We saw some of the pings of Insania making sure that you know, Mikke had eyes on where Supreme was hiding rather than going for Aramis, the lesser kill. And it's got grip here, Insania, but he doesn't want to commit. It knows that there's more behind and he's saving it for the bigger one. Supreme shows his face. The grips of the ready. Supreme will die. Oh, no. It's like 900 gold away from a BKB. And that's kind of... This is where Alliance... They need to ride the wave of hitting timings, right? And this bottom area of the map, Liquid's been playing the extremes, right? They've not been playing the center, they've been playing the top side and the bot side, right? And this is where if Alliance ever kind of venture to these areas, Bane is one of the best heroes in the game for playing by himself, out on his lonesome, you nightmare hero, you quickly scout out around, grip if you need to, and you set up the kill. So yeah, Liquid just using this Bane to punish. And Mickey's popping off. And Mickey as well, like Alliance, that, Unfortunately for them, they are playing a little bit loose. Like with how great of a start they needed, I don't think right now, when they get items, sure, if they get BKBs, they can brush off Liquid before, you know, Luna has Scardy, Daedalus, etc. But right now in this window, if they get caught by a Hoodwink, if they get caught by a Storm Spirit, you have to expect there to be more heroes behind. And Alliance, they are trying to farm the entire map. It's like, look at the minimap right now. You've got Batrider bottom, you've got Antimage in the triangle. Everyone's getting a bit of something, and that's where Liquid is a little bit of, uh, they're, they're exploiting it right now. And BKB about to be complete on Luna. I expect Liquid to try and cross the river. So again, this Anti-Mage does not have Manta. He cannot access a fight with Simplicity because Storm with the Orchid, if he's patient, will always be able to catch this Anti-Mage and unlock the fight for a grip to come into play or an extra bit of control. Yeah, both teams are gonna be hitting some pretty cool timings. Batrider with his BKB, Luna with her BKB. 
It's just how they collide. Because Batrider running in, if there's a Bane there, you're not really going to do anything. That grip will go straight through the BKB, will prevent you from fighting. The Alliance have to be super careful with how they play the game. I'd love to see them just be defensive for a little bit. Play for their own pickoffs and don't expect too much because that is a, yeah, 18 minute BKB. Or 17 if you want to give it its true justice. Well, there's a hunting here for, for Zai to show himself. But Zai's already crossed back into the jungle. I might still get the chance for the setup. They're just on the edge of the vision. I don't quite see one another. Zai, he's aware of Lesla. In fact, Zai's going to set up onto it. The heavy hits as well with the ult. As Lesla has to step right back. So much damage. Like, Hoodwing is actually insane. Now, when you get to, like, Ag's E-Blade, you can, you can 100 to 0 heroes by yourself, pretty much. Like, that's how insane this hero is, but it's so many items. So we rarely get to see it in competitive games. Three-man smoke. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is indeed. Again, finding this time to get the anti-mage kill before he has his Manta. The hunt is successful for Liquid. And the hunt won't stop. They get the kill, they sweep across the map. They need to just keep making it full. And look, Insania leading the charge. This is why Bane is so strong. Nightmare oh. one, grip the other. And here's the follow-up. Mikkei's able to zip across. The ult hit comes flying over from Zai. Supreme shot down from the skies. Do they know that the uh, the Weaver's in the area too? Oh, I mean, he just showed himself, so. They should ignore him and go to Roshan. Yeah, just really nice map breeds here from Liquid. Picking off the necessary heroes and even catching the Weaver to go. I'm in mid game. And he's getting a bit out of control now. And yeah, I I love, I'm, I'm a guy, I play support. I love uh, the old uh, Waterinos, but this is all because of the vision right now coming out. We get to rewatch why Bane is one of the best heroes, both in competitive pubs and also competitive play, is simply this. You lead the charge, you run in by yourself. If you get jumped and don't die, you can brain slap heal yourself back up, or you can just initiate the fight by locking down two heroes. Yeah, and, and it's just the duration of the lockdown as well. So you long, know, yeah. it's six seconds grip, six, uh, seven seconds on the nightmare. I mean, so minimum you're locking down two heroes, six seconds. If you're a Bane and you walk into two heroes, they're not going to be able to do anything yeah. if you're quick with the, the, the nightmare into grip. And like, even if you stun him, one guy's still nightmare, right? So like, yeah, it, it's actually disgustingly good as a hero if you can play at the pace that allows that aggression. And they have these heroes, right? Hoodwink's an assassin, Storm's an assassin, Voidspirit's an assassin. They all like to just grab that one hero, kill him and disengage quickly. It's why Bane thrives. Yeah. It's why Bane Ayo is a, a well-known combo as well, right? Like Bane one plays one side of the map, Ayo farms the other with a gyre or something, TP in, get kills, get back out. Yeah, Liquid taking away this first Aegis. We should be clear, this isn't suddenly Liquid, haha, <laughs> they're going to win the game. No, no, because... Like, I mean, this is still a difficult game. No, absolutely, yeah. Nico Baby's close to his Manta. It's a few hundred gold away from having the ultimate orb. And then once that's there, you know, start, some of the struggles start to arise in terms of the easiness for Mickey to just get in silence and kill this anti-mage. They will yeah, require some of the follow-up control and a lot of that can come indeed from Zai, the bushwhack, something that Nico Baby will have to be a little concerned about even after he's put the Manta. But uh, there we go. So an answer now online against that Orchid on Mickey that Mickey has been crushing the game with so far. You see, you know, Weaver now, he's trying to throw his body in to tank the ganks, but he's going to die. There's just so much damage from a distance. Yeah, so much pick off here from Liquid. Yeah, and right now Liquid, their, their primary objective is to occupy aggressive jungle, get some of these deeper wards to maybe catch anti mage four or five minutes down the line, and just try and take take down some towers. But also, they need to be careful because this is a pretty heads up play here. And will Liquid expect this? Is anybody going to come over and Ooh. start to clear this way? Mickey would be a juicy target to take. If they can get the jump before the BKB and they, they get the spear, they got follow up, they're in the cookie, buying time for them to get on top with the lasso. And, but there's not, there's not enough, he's uh. away! He's away, BKB's off in time, they couldn't do enough damage! They've lost two of them, Supreme gets out. I mean, it, they got so close and... Uh, they did it so well as well, getting in, the spear catching him before he could BKB, the cookie buying that little bit of extra lockdown, followed up by the lasso, but they just 
didn't have enough damage. We didn't see it on camera, but it's the fact that that, again, we're going to see the replay here. Look at the very top. Oh, we actually get, oh, we do. It's that ward. You see Anti-Mage trying to farm the side. The Void Spirit sets up the engagement into the Zai's bushwhack. They have to control to kill him off. I mean, that's you, because, yeah, if that Anti-Mage wasn't controlled, you know, Storm's he's dead. getting yeah. over, Storm's dying, a lot of cash, a lot of XP guns, and Eco Baby. But not the case. Mickey, really against the odds there, living. Yeah, Zai really turning it around from the uh, how hard that lane was to then still being quite an explosive hero. And it, it, it's a product of Hoodwink as a hero, naturally does damage, and Boxy finding those initiations now. Yeah, both of these players really re recovering from what was a pretty brutal laning phase. Now level 15, about to complete BKB on Zion, so he himself should be able to survive through most of this damage. And Alliance, they kind of lean on magic damage being their best friend. Like, sure you have Lil Shredder and a, and a Rebrute from Mars, but it's kind of on Anti-Mage to have two, three more items to then start punishing these heroes correctly. And this is the phase of the game that with a B could be on Luna, a B could be on both Storm and, and Hoodwink. I wouldn't be surprised if they just continue barreling down the lanes because just like all our pubs, when we have Anti-Mage players, they might have two items, but you kind of need four or five items yeah. to, to win the game. No, you're definitely looking to your Anti-Mage saying, what's the plan? We're, you know, we're taking hits on the base right now. A tier three starting to get pushed over to the side. They get the setup on the Lesnar. He's gone. I see Aramis starting to kick off with the, the kisses, but it's put to a stop by the bushwhack. Matu is knocked back. Let's see if they can take the Aegis out of his hands. They can. It's the first life gone. Aegis was expiring in around like 25 seconds anyway, so that is just going to be a, a natural reset. Daedalus. Tw yeah, 24 minutes in, he's ready to Ooh. hit our Matu. And then, yeah, he's going to go for the shard after that. Yeah. That is, this is going to be some orbital cannon style, you know, from the distance killing. Also, I just realized I used the term for when Luna buys Ags to describe the new shard, so. Ah, oh, well. But yeah, very strong. This is anti mage you be so careful. If he ever just blinks in. Oh, yeah, he gets he's torn dead. apart. And he's going Lincoln's, mate. Like, he, it's not as if he's buying that big. Butterfly Scardy style of like surprise, I've got you. He's going for the I need to even get into the fight because he's struggling to even enter. Do you like that he's going Lincoln's here? Do you think like do you think he needs to, Nico Baby? I think for Alliance right now they missed the window. Well, I'm just gonna give this a moment. Of... They've got him. They've got the grip locked down. Okay, so this to your question, this was the perfect example. The Lincoln's That's... in the scenario. Yeah, but he had a lift. He would have lived. Because he wouldn't there get yours, he wouldn't got remnant in. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the thinking here from Nico, but it's going to take a bit of time. How's he doing on it? He's got the ultimate orb. Yeah, still needs the perseverance and the recipe. But unfortunately, just living doesn't help you win the game of Dota 2. You also need to be killing your opponent, and Lincoln's will give him time to farm more. Yeah, so he, they're trying to prolong it. Yeah. As you say, just keep the game going to the point where he's, he has that sort of four or five major items exactly. in his eye, in his inventory. It, it feels like Alliance has kind of agreed together. It's like, guys, yeah. we're going to lose our entire map right now. Just allow Antimage to play around the entire enemy side. Keep skipping. Hope he just plays phenomenal Dota. And then, like you mentioned, those items, they'll come into play. So I don't think we'll be seeing Alliance make any aggro moves unless, you know, Storm's TP bottom, it's 4v5 style. This is going to be a bit of a farm fiesta now for Anti-Mage, trying to cut through that vision. I would love to give the Anti-Mage Warden sentries, allow him to play on his own side, own that territory and try and get some farm that way, but pretty scary. They do see three heroes mid, so if they wanted to jump Zai, they could. Unfortunately, Batrider has fallen down the pecking order of net worth after his start. Doesn't have a blink dagger yet. Alliance hugging each other as well. They they just fully respect the fact that at any minute a Bane could appear or a Bushwhack. Like we mentioned uh, Lincoln's, but if Hoodwink's the one to initiate, Bushwhack isn't going to be cancelled by Lincoln's. No, you for sure. Bushwhack's still... definitely the yeah. still the big one that Nico Baby's got to watch out for. You know, Zai gets that, aims up the ult. This could be the the pretty anti mage counter if he's out of position. That is. But Nico, he's now having a, a buddy with him as he farms. He farmed the triangle with friends. He's farming top lane with his friend Aramis. Just to make sure he gets the game. I've got the blink on Supreme, so more chance of 
grabbing those that, that needed to be grabbed, maybe get on top of Insanius, put a stop to these grips. Like, Matu is the only one who walks up high ground, right, to hit the buildings. Everyone else plays on the vision that he obtains to then find pickoffs. Well, that's now. And Nico, baby, they're going to try and start the action off the Manafoy coming out early, trying to burst, but Tumba with the grips there, they've controlled Nico, baby. Matu able to live as he pops the PKB. The arena's out, but there's not enough physical to take him down. Aramis tries to finish him with the last few hits. Uh, you see the Weaver trying to get from the side. They're trying to reach over towards Matuma Man, but they can't get over to him. Everybody Aww. died on Alliance. He does finally die, but an incredible cost had to be traded for it. The whole team of Alliance dying there for that attempt on Matuma Man. That was so close. I hope we get to see a replay of that because that's the type of thing where it's the... Okay, we do. Nice. All right, we get to rewatch it. So they initiate instantly. It's in a nightmare to dodge the spells into a grip. So yeah, unfortunately for Alliance, that's the type of moment where Luna is technically out of position by maybe a, you have like a two second window to find that kill. So you either commit everything in the moment and you kill, or you accept the fact that there's going to be some turnaround saves. So super unfortunate for Alliance. Maybe if they quickly found that kill, it could have been something. But with Luna living and also living with pumping out damage, you know, yeah. 100 HP, oh, but still throwing out, yeah. out those Lucent Beams with the Shard, therefore you're pumping out some right clicks. That is pretty devastating. That could have been a, like a game-winning opening, right? Because suddenly Anti-Mage shoots up the net worth if yeah. he finds that kill. Yeah, I, 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 I do like this though. Nico Baby is what, straight away from the Lincolns. Oh, did he? All right, good lad, yeah. yeah. I mean, he said Bushwhack, Ags on the Storm, right? That, you know, that yeah. Lincolns don't do anything against that one, so. Yeah, I think at the, the last you, you don't want to play with the Lincolns this game. He just realized, lads, I can't even survive. So I'm happy he went through a fight. And also, I think in that moment of like Batrider Blink Initiation esque fight, he's really, wait, I should be killing here. Yeah. Um, I well, Chinese fans, that's great. Are you against what? Three range calls? Yeah. Yeah. So pretty good. It's going to be pretty annoying. I j it just, ah, there's that previous engagement. It's so close for Alliance. But they have shown through this series that they aren't getting disheartened too easily. You know, they were pumping and cheering and, you know, fist bumping after game two victory. Yeah, they got the good vibes. They got the good vibes. So this is the vibes they need right now in this type of game. Anti-Mage, even when behind, as long as you can play the map well, it can all, there can always be a, a good comeback. This yeah. is the, the perfect 1v9 hero. That's why people hate it. I mean, I'm, I'm just hoping we see, like, a really satisfying Mana Void, right? You know? Ooh, like a crisp, yeah. yeah uh, you want to see a... Oh, like a, like a real banger just dropped down on Mickey. Oh, uh, oh. Other things are getting dropped on him right now. That wasn't the that banger. Was, that was a mini banger. No, that was a bang. That was, that was a bang. Okay, it's a bang, not a banger. Yeah, it's yep. like a little bit of a, yeah, it's HP. It, well, it has to be, okay, first of all, it has, has to be, to be a storm killing blow. Yeah. Zipping across the map into the middle of his own team. Oh, yeah, no, Used no, 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 all no. his mana. Nico, baby. Boop. That's what you want to see, see when you have Storm right? and the, the animage going on. Storm has the act. Like, he he does have the axe, right? He's got it done right now, Mickey. He, yeah. Oh, he's very close. 500, 400 gold off. And that's going to be the thing, right? He's going to be the one jumping in. Yeah. Hugging the Luna. So I can easily see these boop, plays happening. And maybe Nika Baby is going back for the Lincolns. He keeps teasing us back and forth, back and forth. Oh, we'll see what he considers. Hey, yeah, axe on the, the Weaver as well. It's going to be a good save for Nico Baby if he gets gone on. I mean, it, it cancels at least half of the initiation tools. Oh. So it does simplify that, but... Oh, Aramis. He's... Trying to jump away, jumps into the pit. Mate, Roshan nearly... It was close to a nearly. deny. Very it was close. close. Now, talking about Roshan, of course, quite a, a nice thing to go for. I guess they're without Mickey right now, so they don't want to do it 4v4. Yeah, very much respecting the fact that yeah. Alliance has some initiation here. They do. I mean, yeah, you've always got to respect the arena snapfire combat. And now it's on Nico Baby's job to kind of get them away from Roshan, right? Push in this mid lane, get to bot lane, yeah. try and get things going towards Liquid side. Of course, you still respect a zip from afar, a Bane setting up from initiation. But in this type of game right now, Liquid will often use all their resources at the pit. So it kind of gives you some time to get that extra four or 500 gold. And Liquid, they have two choices here. They either send Bane to tier two bottom, smoke up, catch him, or like what they're doing now, just Whoa. see through this illusion instantly I mean, into the pit. Think Alliance is going to be able to have a say about this, Roche? I mean, they might give it a go. Kinda. Oh, Supreme's already half HP. Ah, and yeah, it's going to force the BKB out from both of the cores here. Saying, you know, if Liquid is the Eclipse coming out from a Man, 
But they themselves still having their BKBs. They're going to look to fight with the BKBs coming short. Mickey goes in with a big snip, grabs the three of them. They're taking out the two. They'll look for Nico Baby. Nico Baby getting gripped from the low ground. Instead, he locks him in a position. The bushwhack follows him up as they lock down Nico Baby. It's stick charges and a blink. Nico Baby manages to live. He will get away. But they lost Leslau. Leslau, as we saw, bought back immediately. Staman and also going down. Excellent discipline from Liquid there. You know, poking, teasing that Roshan, but disengaging correctly, playing underneath the cover of the of the vision there. And then when Alliance initiate, they kind of whiff it, right? Two BKBs, as we get to see here. Great They're three on the mans. retreat. And then a big Aghanim's uh, Vortex grabbing everyone there. But again, that is just... They've clicked the BKBs, they waited, they know when it's timing out. Insania waits for the Manta, hits that big old grip. Doesn't get the kill off Nika, baby. But yeah, I mean, patience very, is critical. There. Very close as well. We saw like Leslau with that like last litter of HP tanking the hit from Zai. If, if he had died like to one sort of instance of damage before that, that break would have hit the anti-mage and Nico Baby would have definitely been dead. Yeah, an Alliance, oh, sorry, Liquid, they use so much, so many resources here. Alliance and I respawned, they're ready to go. And this smoke, it could still be okay for Alliance if they get the jump. Or if they react accordingly. Nico Baby's aware something's up. And we're in with the initial silence of the Resident Pulse. Looking to knock back onto Boxy. Nico Baby waiting it out, hiding behind the tree, looking for a chance to maybe get in on this. But they know that the BKB's ready for Matumba Man. Good time lapse on a Supreme there, gets him back up to full HP after <laughs> falling rather low. He got hit by like two Lucent Beams and, a, and an eight. Yeah, and nearly killed him. Yeah. They actually threw like no right clicks at him and <laughs> he nearly died. I'm well, still hesitant to return into the Roshan pit liquid. But Alliance and I smoked up. They're giving it their own jolly good go. Like if they find the jump, they can kill. Oh! There they go! They get the lasso to start things off! Into the Spear Arena combo, they're looking to burst through Matumba Man before he can get the BKB Satanic off. Matsu, he's able to find it though. BKB is off in time. He will live. And now, Alliance, they'll back off. Wait out until the BKB comes to an end. Mickey with his last bit of mana trying to chase Storm Mana, but he cannot do so. Nico Baby gets back in as the BKB of Matu gets to an end, takes out the Luna. Matu, he'll buy back. Wants to keep it 5v5 whilst both teams contest each other around the Roshan Pit Supreme, trying to get away here, but there's no escape for him to be found. Is able to chuck the Flame Break over to take out Zai with him. It's back to a 4v4. Liquid, they'll resume business in the pit. But now Alliance, this is like the window where even if Liquid takes this Aegis, they know if they kill off Matumba Man, I mean, he won't have buyback. Are they going to try and... I think Nico Baby could try and get on this. He's got the Linkers for coming out. Oh. He might scout out a little... Oh, they're going to see how low it is and they're going to try for jump. They're not. Oh, mate. If I bet you if the Linkers came two seconds earlier... He would have been poised to get in oh, there. Oh, he would have been, yeah. been going for it. Especially if it had Mana Void back up. Because of course, still on cooldown 20 seconds. So Liquid, you know, both teams sort of putting buybacks in towards that effort to get the Roshan Liquid, do still claim it for themselves. Shard off to, to Boxy, and Aegis into the hands of Matumba Man. But over on the side of Alliance, as we saw, you know, Nico Baby continuing to get those items out. Link is done on top of the Skadi, reaching close to the level 25 as well. Yeah, Boxy really being a menace right now in this game. Like, he's got the Ags, even a Shard. Like, he's just... Be He's cutting through and jumping these back lines. So, for example, that initiation on Tomato outside the pit, you weren't seeing Snapfire suddenly more than a kiss on top before the BKB. Because, again, Boxy's there shutting them down. And, yeah, Liquid, they had to use Matu buyback. They did. It's a big game. buyback. So, if you're an anti-mage player right now, you're probably telling your team, boys, skip waves, survive five minutes, then play for the they have no buyback, I now have a butterfly or that one item I've been able to farm in that five-minute window. I mean, he's queued up an E-Blade. Is that going to change? Oh, yeah. Is that the pan to go sort of full cannon and just E-Blade mana voids to the storm or something? I mean, he heard what you said, and he, he's trying to deliver. No, but he is, he's trying to give us a banger. He is trying to give us a voice. banger. We've only seen some bangs, but yeah. not bangers so far. But this is very much the... You expect your opponent to be fought more farm than you, so E-Blade's your kind of pseudo-defensive tool. Because you E-Blade yourself, can't get right-clicked. It allows him to jump into the fights and then get back out. Still with the agility of the right clicks, but you see, even though Mars dies in this window of time, this is the call from the team, right? It's the, please, sacrifice yourself, just push the lane. Because even though Leathers dies, he also got the wave. So now it's going to be an extra 20 seconds for this wave to come through top. Anti-Mage hits bottom. Like, this is just Anti-Mage game 101. And I, I'm a bit surprised that Weaver wasn't thrown to top as well to grab the next wave. 
But yeah, we now get to see the Lincolns in play. Lincolns pop, instantly use spell shield, quickly run away. Get yourself out of there. Now we're in anti-mage territory of the game. Top net worth. If they survive the Aegis like I mentioned, we might have a game on our hands. And Liquid, this is a response to this type of gameplay. You want to get through your jungle, clear it out. We might even see Insania throw down a cheeky ward back here just to see what's happening. But then through that team work of emptying your jungle, you have to be decisive. You have to get yourself to an objective and just hammer it down. It looks like they're grouping up for bottom now. Two minutes left on the Aegis for Liquid if they are to make a play. If they're not making a play in the next two minutes, there'll be another two and a half minutes after that where Matu won't have buyback and Alliance might turn up the heat. Ah, so yeah, it's definitely a bit spooky. That window for Liquid. Alliance will almost certainly have that in mind. Liquid as well. They're playing for the pickoff, but if Weaver's in position with the Aghanims, that time lapse, resetting the engagement, Liquid might be able, uh, even overstep their own mark in no, their, for sure. their, their initiation. It's it's very hard for Liquid to make the call to go on this anti mage now when you see him. Nico Baby is going to be very difficult to take down. Dude, this game's getting pretty close. A minute tw 10 now left on the Aegis. Liquid slowly stuttering their way through the jungle, like easing their way in. They're like, boys, are we going for this? What, what's happening? They're kind of waiting for Matu to complete his butterfly. It should be coming out now. Ish. And now they're going up. Oh, here we go. Nice save onto Lesla. We'll get him out of this. Matu's going to commit with the Eclipse to keep giving the space to push on. Force out the fortification. See if they can get back in the base. Yeah, just under a minute on the Aegis left to work with. Boxy, he is in. Nico is going to try and respond with an early mana void jump over. Not enough to burst him. They get the lasso drag back in onto the Luna, though. So Matu will die up on the high ground. Mickey comes in with a two man grab, pulls back both of them, but no follow up damage. They'll be fine. Nightmare onto Nico, baby, but they're not wanting to get back in onto the high ground, especially whilst Matu's already used the PKB and has had, you know, popped that Aegis. Oh. Nico, baby, he's in. And he's ready to go, but he's got, he gets grabbed. He's been caught in the pushback all the time oh, now. The man will give his life there to save Nico Baby. Nico Baby ready to go in for round two. He'll look for Insania. Not enough burst though, even with the mana void. So Insania is going to be fine. They've got the control silence as well. Nico Baby's got to try and sneak back out of this. I get him out with the cover of the Glimmer Cape. In fact, he's thinking about... Does he want to go back in? He's a little low. They get the spear connection onto Matumba Man. Nico Baby's looking for the back lines. He's going to jump, trying to catch on top of the support, but the grab's there once more. Time lapse against the man and keeping Nico Baby fight for... That's the banger! That's the banger! That's there, the there banger right there! Gets <laughs> it onto Mickey, blows up the storm. Four dead on Liquid. And no buyback to be had here. That's the man who's just popped a banger. That man better be tipping his supports there. Legitimately, Aramis and Stamanen carried that fight. Glimmer capes, cookies, time lapses, absolutely everything required. Yeah, they were him. keeping that man alive. And he he blinked in multiple times to his own Because death. he believed. He believed. In the power of his supports. They found the tiger and now they're hitting the tier threes. And it's no buyback. No buyback for the whole death of, of Matsuma man. Boxy will be able to jump in, get a kill out of this. Nico, baby, he's ready to jump over with the back of Supreme. They'll take out Boxy. Luna doesn't have buy This is the window that I mentioned. The no age is perfect. No they've they've window. hit it perfectly. The sort of the, the cooldown on his respawn, uh, very similar to the cooldown on his buyback. Alliance working with that last bit of the window. Another grab. Boxy just pulled back for this defensive nightmare coming out to give Boxy time to jump out. It will be enough. He's out with the dissimilate. Boxy will live. Nico, baby, saw him like jumping in. He's feeling feisty. He's got that mana void ready to pop once more. Liquid have to be so careful. They have both tier two as alive, top and bot. They don't need to overcommit here. Alliance can't just end the game. So that's why they're, you know, they're backing out a bit. They kind of got a little bit feisty. We get to oh, see the replay. We're going to see the banger here. And we, oh, here it is. Here it is. Look at that mana on Mickey. It's so tasty. First of all, of course, the cool little save with the time lapse. And there it is. That's oh, it's got to be a hefty two and a half K damage banger. It, oh. Again, there is still room for improvements. If he was able to get the banger. There we go. Look at him. He knows. Oh, ooh, ooh. That was a clenched fist. 
bless him. But yeah, that is... He has still... He hasn't blown up the storm and gone, banger, you're dead. Sure. It's banger, right click, banger, dead. Sure, we need the banger to happen to be the killing blow and yes. to kill at least, you know, someone next to the Exactly. Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, again, like that was again, beautiful. I'm not saying it was bad. I think it was actually quite game winning, yeah. if anything. But I like the fact we still have one more level to go to keep the fans on the edge of this. And it, yeah, and I do like that, of course, he did go for the banger skill build. We're seeing it with the, the frequency of mana voids that you can pop out at 25. The BPMs are, out, are through the roof right now, for sure. Like, he, it's a 20 second cooldown. He's using it to, to literally initiate fights. Like, the, the mini stun, I say a mini stun, it's a second, but he's using that one second stun to, to catch these mobile heroes. Just yeah. got him. Yeah, no need for treads. And we've seen don't the effect. Don't need the treads. Uh, don't need to get the, the butterfly. It's, fine. it's like a fury room with exactly. PC. Exactly. I mean, if you had the power to blink every four seconds, I would you walk anywhere? Every four You're seconds, not walking Owen. anywhere. I, I can. I'm doing it right now. Owen. All right. Okay. Very smart. Thank you. I'm gonna clip that and show my mom later. <laughs> but yeah, he's got the the butterfly, the e-blade, and it's really effective. Like he's actually there's no way to remove it right now. So if he's ever out of position. Without a glimmer or support, he plays oh, himself. Boxing. Luna does nothing to him. Smoke comes off. They know that they're over the trees. They're going to get the jump on Supreme. Supreme's in trouble. They've taken him down. They turn over towards the Manon as well. Two dead on Alliance. Alliance, they've got to get out of here. Now I'm missing to the trees. He's trying to hide, but they've got the vision. Three dead on Alliance there. Liquid more prepared to jump. Uh, yeah, somewhat devastating because, of course, Alliance, they didn't deal with that high ground spot, so they're all hugging that anti-mage uh, oh, as he gets jumped, the Batrider gets jumped, sorry, and then Weaver instantly locked down by the Storm Spirit because, again, they're playing in the air without vision. So, unfortunately, the comeback is still happening for Alliance, but that one little misplay brings it straight back again. They're running down mid. 60 seconds, no Weaver. That's critical. Like, yeah, he's, he, Samana's been doing huge saves. Oh, Nico, baby. Oh, he wants it. Oh, oh, uh -oh. well. That was a ban, not a bang or anything. Yeah, else. A, I mean, you know, something. it's not going to do that. He was testing it, right? See how much e blade Mana Void did when there was a hero right. that had a lot of mana. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of damage, as it turns out. Uh, but he'll, he'll start trying to cut the creep waves in the mid. But they got no creeps. Liquid, They've got this like 13 second window now. Yeah, to get the racks. To get any, anything that they want, and a racks is all they're getting. Anti mage skipped it pretty well. All right, this game is beautifully close, back and forth, and, and vision is critical right now. Both teams they have the capacity to 100 to zero hero if they're out of position. It's simply on where they take the fight. Are they smoking into the engagement? Are they warding the high grounds? And you see here, Liquid, they're retreating to the Roshan pit. They have the high ground vision. They're giving themselves the best possible chance to make that initiation. Oh, he's, he's going in! He's going in, it is up, but it is in now. Let's now step it across. They've got to try and save their anti-mage. Nico, baby, he's jumped in and he's died. He's got, he's buyback. got the buyback. He's coming back in for round two, oh. but they've lost Supreme. Supreme does not have buyback. And Liquid, they're going to push on. Matu punching into Aramis. Look at the Lesnar. Nico Baby's going to watch from the side. Maybe see if there's a chance to jump in on this. The Bushwax caught Aramis. He's out. Lesnar as well. Aramis buys back, but Lesnar alongside Supreme, they do not have buyback. I just feel Nico Baby thought he was a lot tankier than he actually was. And every fight has been critical. It's been the teamwork of Alliance that has won these fights. It's not been Anti Mage 1v9 in killing off heroes by himself. It's been. Everyone utilizing every little thing that they have in inventory. And unfortunately, Nika Baby just yeeted himself in. Pretty awesome. unfortunate. It, it, it does happen. I feel like this is like the energy we saw when they won that fight. Nika Baby, he's like, he's feeling himself. He's like, boys, this is my game now. I, I respect the fact he's playing with that tenacity, but you have to play with the team behind you. And unfortunately, Antimage is that type of hero. You're either in or you're not. And he blinked in, instantly punished for it. But again, there's still one more fight for Alliance now because everyone's alive in 30 seconds. Buybacks are not available. No. Alliance. Only no, Backrider in 20 gold time. So and Leslau and uh, Kill or so, you know, if he gets the gold. Or, you know, three seconds of Philly Stone. So now they're getting their second Rex here. See if Liquid want to stick around for more. I mean, Aegis and Cheese, they're feeling pretty good.
So he's sweeping over towards the bottom. Liquid. I can take the outpost over if they want. I can take their time with this. They're feeling pretty strong. I mean, Alliance, they're charging at them though. Supreme. As the creep waves, as soon as they hit the uh, the tier three area, instant indication they're leaving their base. So Liquid, start throwing down the remnants and preparing themselves. But yeah, Alliance once again show. But yeah, this game is the is probably the most beautiful example of like support, play, and vision to enable big team fights because both teams have been utilizing it pretty well. And when they fall off that like perfect utilization of it, that's when they get instantly crushed. So yeah, Blink Dagger and Weaver also pretty important to help. Blink in when Anti-Mage blinks in, be ready for the fight, but don't be too ready because Void Spirit with the Ags, Silence might just ruin the Weaver. A boxy. Looking for Aramis, but just a bit of a tease. Alliance, they've got to choose the right time to strike her, and it's not going to be easy. You see all the, the couple of Lincolns they have buffing one another up. It's going to make it a lot harder for them to find that, that big mana void that they hope for. And tier 3 to go down. The final set of racks open. It's Boxy. Just fishing for action here. I don't get it. I mean, Liquid, they're fine with the slow siege. Three minutes left on Aegis, but this time he does have the buyback if he is to go down twice. So Liquid, that's why they're not leaving this area. They understand that this is their barracks to take. Unless a, uh, Alliance get the perfect initiation. Let's see. Nico, baby. They've spot him in the trees here. They've got the bushwhack. So he's still looking for a chance to jump into Supreme. He gets the last off, but he in turn has been gripped. An early mana void comes down. Not enough damage to pop Mickey. Mickey's out with the BKB. A remnant grab, locking down Nico, baby, but it's Mantra Illusions doing the damage, as that will pop the Aegis of Matu. Try with the spear timing off the back of the respawn, it's not going to be the case. Time that saves Leslau, gets him out of the way of the Zip and Mickey. Now Liquid, they've done the damage to the base. All of the racks are taken, the Mega Creeps are out. Nico, baby, jumping over to look for the kill on Boxy, but the tree's down, the bushwhack there as well. Into the pullback of Mickey. Nico, baby, falling low, the Silence connects and put the Manta in second follow. Silence is there from the Pulse, he can't get out. He's dead for two minutes. Liquid, I think they've done it here. GG is indeed called. Liquid will take this third game. And with that, the series is theirs. We might have not seen the true ultimate form of the banger, but at least this game in itself was one.